So you may not see it again, but we're touching on the subject one more time. What are the best movies of 1999? And this time we have a guest. Yes, it's another, but that makes it much harder. We got someone here to help. I had my hand up to do another sign. It's the wrong show. Silver screen dudes. Yes, yes. New t-shirts, new merch. Forget the MOW. It's all about the SSD. Do you like it? Do you like it? It's not gold. It's actually silver. I promise. Um, <laughs> and look who we've got. That's why I wanted to throw it up. It's the man from the ministry. He was with us last year. The one, the only, Den, the tech. How you doing, sir? They let me back on. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, then the tech, the movie fan who does watch 1999 movies. That's the My favorite year of movies. Cool. It's a, yeah. it's a goodie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's goodie. A very good one. It's a very good one. Um, what was really interesting is that we spoke about doing another 1999. Now, one of the silver screen rules are, you know, you can re-bring it up. But when you're doing a triple man show, the silver screen dudes have a joint list. So I've built a list. He's built a list. And we're going. <gasps> There's three people. We need to combine our list. And the amount of films that have just been thrown to the cutting room floor. Oh. <laughs> film strip was like, wow, and this on, is it. And on that note, one of the rules when we do a revisited list is that we don't, unless it's AJ and myself, you know, let's say, like, for instance, I had Fight Club in my last list. And if it was just the two of us, AJ would have been allowed to use Fight Club today. But when we have a guest, we can't reuse movies. So for those of you who didn't see the first video, please go and watch that if uh, you haven't. But look, there you go. Uh, but we are. I'm going to quickly run over my, what my top ten list was. AJ, you then do yours, and then I guess we'll explain how the show works. Ah, thank you for reminding me. Okay, um, do, 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 do. I've got the images somewhere anyway, so I will do that instead. Yo, yeah. I've got them logged in my head because you have I'm all the again. images from the last twenty. No, movies. no, I could. Oh, I could I have them like that because I was that was my list. You lot come by and <laughs> made my list, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, God, I can't use that. Yeah, I've, Ooh, I've got the list. I've got. Yeah. All right, go ahead, man. Okay. So my 10 to 1, 10, I had Dogma, American Pie, Analyze This, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, South Park, Bigger, Longer and Uncut, Toy Story 2, The Matrix, Fight Club, American Beauty and The Green Mile. Right. A lot of those would have made my list this week. Um, for right. me, in at number 10 was The Sixth Sense. In at number 9 was Blue Streak. In at number 8 was Analyze This, so that would have been a punt. Oh, same territory, actually. No. Number 7, Notting Hill. 6, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. At 5 was Payback for The Mummy. 3, American Pie. Number 2, The Matrix. And 1 was American History X, which was released in 98 in the States, but 99 in the UK. Mm. Right. Let me just jump in and say this. I watched that show. Everyone should go and check it out. Your your number one, Nico. Yo, that had me. That was one that would have been like my number two, not my number one. But it's one of those movies mm. that I've seen many. Well, I've seen it twice and two times. Yeah, it it was a flood. And it the second you. time, I didn't know. I didn't watch the ending when it when it when it was taken off. Uh, don't when he said, "Don't let me." Oh, I'm getting chills right now. Mm. Oh, sorry. So yeah, that movie, and then, but one of the movies on this list, Dogma, classic. AJ, get with get Kevin Smith. Get to Kevin Smith, man. Oh, it's not he's on it. He's not, he's got. I, haven't done, I haven't done Dogma. On it. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on he's, he's on Kevin Smith now. He's got. He's got his oh. head around Clerks. He likes it. You like Cl Clerks one, the first one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yo, yo, welcome to a new world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was, well, I was right. sharing a story with AJ last week, actually, then. One of the girlfriends who didn't stay my girlfriend for very long. You know, we're talking about, like, uh, when you're trying to show a movie to someone and you're kind of, like, watching, you're going, it's good, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? And they're kind of not paying attention. Oh, let me go get a beer. Let me just check my text on my phone. I'm like, what movie? It's important. Mm -hmm. And one girl had the gall to say to me once, what am I watching? It's just a dumb mouse. I went, <gasps> Out, uh, get out, 
You don't. Well, it was speak nice knowing you. But before you go, let's go somewhere and then we can go. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, we'd already done the horizontal tango. We were good. Uh, we were good. How? Anyway, I was. She wasn't. Uh, you won the race. <laughs> I won the race. <laughs> Young, dumb, and you know, you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> How does this work, AJ? Right. Five minutes. Right. <laughs> that's what I was actually going to say. So Dan t- alluded to the fact that if you've not seen last episode, you need to check it out. But if you are there, we're not telling you to go and jump to the old episode now. You're watching this one and enjoy it. And we're going to explain to you how the show works. So Nico, please tell them, how does the movie Mount Rushmore work? What is it all about? Yes, for those of you tuning in for the first time, thank you for joining us. Basically, it's a top 10 show between two best friends from school and now a trio of three best friends joining us when we have a guest. And Den happens to be one of our very, 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 very bestest, bestest, bestest friends. Um, so here's how it works. We get, assigned a, we get assigned a topic. We go our separate ways. We come right back here into the video, to the recording, and deliver to you, the Silver Screen Dudes, our film family, our individual top 10s. When it's a guest episode, then the tech will go first, delivering his bottom three. We will then bounce whoever picked their movie in their private on the side list, but we'll deliver our joint bottom three. Then we'll then do his next two. We will do our next two. Then when we get to our top five, we will trade one apiece. If at any time while we are rounding off our individual top ten lists, one person has a movie in a higher position, that person will say... And... And we will punt and talk about that movie when we get to the higher position. Once we have all rounded off our individual top 10 lists, we will create the movie Mount Rushmore, the name of the show. These are the four quintessential diverse must-see movies of the genre. Sorry, I'm very tired, which this week is... Top 10 films of 1999. Oh, another Top 10 movies of 1999. I was going to say revisited, but we always call yeah. it another. And yes, that's where we create the movie. No okay. Valentine Rushmore, by the way. I forgot to message JT. Oh, right, that, that, that's all good. What I was going to say is, after we have created, because Nico forgot because he's tired, in the words of Chandler Bing, the movie Matt Rushmore. <laughs> right? Once we have created that, the four must-see movies of any given category, it gets over to you, the screen as well. It gets even more laser-focused, even more challenging, <laughs> even more hard, because you have to crown El Capitan, El Numero Uno, the King of Kings, the best of the best of the best, sir, with honours. And to quote Highlanda, in the end, there can only be one. And how do you crown that one? Well, you head on over to X, and then you go to at Movie MT Rushmore, or more importantly, at Movie Pulse for you, the page fronted by good old JT from We Love Movies. And that's where you get to crown your winners now. It was a Valentine's Day one. It wasn't sent, so we're not going to do the category of who done what and what have you. And I'm sure my number one was the number one movie anyway. So it Deadpool doesn't matter. What would it have been? What would it have been? Yeah, exactly what I thought. <clears throat> Why did you put it on the list? That was a, a, a murder that killed the list. It, it would, yeah. It would, it would. <laughs> and by the way, that is Wait. such a uh, what's it called again? Romantic movie. It's such oh, a it they they advertise it like that. It's based on that. Nico said it best on the show. Ooh, Once again, go check it out. He said it perfect. Go see what they picked. These guys are romantic as well. It was a, I watched it just not too long ago. Really good list Thank from you. both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, if you think we're good individually, imagine what we do together. <laughs> That's what you're gonna see on the <laughs> Okay, then over to you, sir, with your number 10. Right. So let's be clear with this. 1999, I was 19 years old. and uh, Actually, yeah, I was 19 years old. And hey, I get to see these movies in cinema properly. And I can't believe I watched this in the cinema. One of them was The Wood. I know it's just a picture of um, three guys. This story was about... As, wait, by the way, have any of y'all seen it? The Wood. Question. Did you see this Go in ahead. the States? Because I don't recall The Wood being on screens over here. Yeah, it was, dude. Was it? Yeah, not just major cinemas show movies. Well, he saw it, didn't he? Yes, that's why I asked if he was in the States when he saw it. No, I was in the UK. Yeah, no, but he it said, yeah, but he States. saw it. That's what I was like, I'm just wondering where you were when you saw it. Yeah. I remember picking yeah. up the DVD. In, but yes, that's what, in when? In 2001? 2000. Yeah, 
we watch it what happened a lot of these a lot of movies like this come out you remember i live in south there's a cinema near me called beckham right there's another one that's, that, that was done one's words i know the ghetto cinemas that will put this movie on for a week make the money survive and then go on the wood was one of them and it was a very ghetto experience but it was a good experience it was a loud ex um cinema noise everywhere it wasn't it was was not a proper experience of watching a movie in a cinema but that crowd environment love it and the woods it, i didn't know anything about it when i went to watch it the reason i liked it was just it's three friends that showed their life growing up one coming from some country guy and it's, it's just really a friendship movie but then one of them that you thought was like he went away like it's, it's his wedding day and this guy decided to go on the lamb and run away from his wife and everything. And they had to go find him. And while they're finding him, they're sharing the story. And even though it's about a wedding, the story is really about two first loves that's reuniting for the first time. And it's just, it's like, once again, going back to your old show you did um, last week, it's a great love story, but it was like in 1999. And man, I love it. It's not for everyone, but it has some star like, you know, Mike Epps. Um, Tay Diggs is in this. He's the guy that everyone's running out. <laughs> but yeah. If you get a chance to watch it, watch it. It might not fit for all of y'all, but um, I have I have seen this, but it's such a blank to me because, I, as I said, I brought the DVD, and I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I always get confused. I get that. I give you in that and the best man for some reason. I know they both. Yeah, it's 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 that time. There's gonna be other movies on the list. What got that thing for me, which is the same movie come out, but it's two different studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's exactly the same thing. And this was the one. This one got me because the female lead that played the teenager self and then her adult self she looked like a kid and then she looked like an adult and <laughs> to this day she still looks like a kid and she can look it's it's, it's crazy but yeah it's a movie the reason why it runs it runs it i can't even say the word the reason why it fit with me is not like it was a big movie for, i wouldn't recommend this to everyone to go watch it it's not a movie i go go watch this movie it's because the time i watched it i was experiencing stuff while I was, um, that, that movie was going on so for me it fit and it's one of them core memory movies such a core memory movies I would never go watch it again because I don't want to ruin it I want to keep the happy memory of this movie in my head so right now it's on my list and it's number 10 cool. so, got you my topic 9 in it oh yeah sorry and I went way too yeah. long for that right sorry about that let me cut it short then Fine, man. Um, my number <laughs> my number 9 is a movie which everyone's seen this movie, but not actually seen this movie. <laughs> Ed TV. Yeah, because at this time, everyone oh, knows dude. the Truman Show. And this is the Truman no, Show. No, I remember this. I do remember yeah. this. I remember it coming out. Point, I'm not seeing it. I do. I, I remember watching it and it fell beneath the radar. Yeah. Yeah, I say, I still say, wakey, wakey, hands off, snakey. <laughs> Yo, the cast is amazing. And it's about, um, with this movie, you have a brother. They just had to make a reality movie. And Ellen DeGeneres was in this movie. And she's with a producer, a producing company. She wanted to make a, a reality movie, but it's 24-7, nonstop. They're going to record someone. And they're cast for everyone. And they got Woody Harrison as the person going for it. But um, Matthew McConaughey plays his brother, quiet, gentle. But they went, they want him. Let's get, let's shoot him. And he just... Decided to do it and became the most famous person. And they wouldn't stop shooting him. And because he signed a contract, and then after a while, this is a reality show before there was reality shows. So think Truman Show, but they know they're in a TV show. And it's just, they're just the most dysfunctional family. And everything came out. Like, you know, the dad sleeping with people, the mom, the sister just trying to get one. The brother is trying to create new things, trying to be there. And the brother's girlfriend is in love with the brother. It's just... It's. I love Truman Show. There's a ghost in the atmosphere going, dear it in the house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love what's it called again, um, Truman Show. And this is meant to be oh, yeah. the same thing, but it's totally different. But I love the show movie as well. It's one of them ones that I've watched. So what? Hang on, we've lost them. And my apologies. My apologies. My hand dragged across my mouse and ruined everything. <laughs> so, yeah. um it's a movie I recommend to go um, watch, definitely. But let me get to my number eight. If I stop taking up so much time, and it's going to surprise a lot of y'all for this being number eight. Yeah. No, I'm 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 completely with you on that one, bro. 
I, but we the reason were why considering I... putting this into our list. So for two episodes now, this has been my number 11. Two episodes, granted. And it very nearly made the list. But there are certain films that we feel have not had a spotlight, and that's the reason why they're... This one didn't make it, but yeah, I think it's this is the best prequel. Not unlimited power. Again, I watch, I watch y'all, so I know I can just draw that in there. But I give you this right. I'm not a big fan of this movie. Hear me out. It's number eight on my list, just because if you remember the feeling in 1999. You know the people that watch the, the the new ones that's coming out. Yeah. This the prequels came out, and like a few years later, we had animation in between, and a few years later we had a movie. Star Wars came out in the seventies and the eighties, and then it was like remastered everything. So there was nothing new for yep. years. This is my and first I was at the age. Yeah. I was the age when I was back in the days when I was. Um, I remember as I said getting the old Yoda plants and everything like that as a toy. A plant was a toy. That's um. Phantom, um, Return of the Jedi and all the movies. So I was watching all those, and I watched the remaster ones of those in the cinema, but mm -hmm. I didn't have that yeah, buzz. Yeah. The '99, watching that trailer. Oh, oh if the you trailer remember, was amazing. Oh my god! I came out the cinema and I watched this movie twice in the same day. The first time watching it, I came out. It's the greatest movie ever. The second time, I was like, "There's a lot of talking. <laughs> There's a lot more talking and action." But the buzz got me. So I actually watched the movie and loved it. And then slowly over time, kind of dropped off. But compared to the movies they made now, it holds up. And it I wish really it started does. with... Um, yeah, but I wish it started with um, Darth Vader being older, Anakin being older. But I get mm. it. They want to show our, our, uh, such a kind-hearted individual can slowly go and get corrupted over time. Yes, but yes. at the same George time, Lucas make, him the a, make him a teenager. Make him a teenager, man. But no matter. Love that movie. And that's my... Um, I don't even describe this movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Dude, it's and great. Actually, if, you if you haven't seen it by now, you're not going to go see it. So, hey. I don't understand <laughs> the universal hatred for this and what seems to be a, a, a growing consensus among people that the prequels were good you know it's like no they weren't just shush what they oh, funny. I, oh. I, 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 I don't like what this is the fact that when people that don't like it are people that watch the original star wars as kids mm. my nephew prefers 100 percent the prequels are his star wars because do you watch the new ones now with the old ones? Ones that I think are so great. Why does that look like that? It looks rubbish. It doesn't look that good. He's, he's watching it. He likes the story, but it still doesn't look that good for him. This one, Anakin relates to the kids and they look at him and see themselves through that kid. So that's for sure. What, for sure. For sure. And the, that the, pod race scene. The pod and race Darth is Maul. The Ma Darth Maul's my favorite Star Wars character. Um, there's, there's, I, the talking didn't bother me. That's how wars start. Old men not getting along with each other. It To me, that all makes sense. Um, I don't mind that I'm on a small island. I'll defend this movie forever. But I do think that, it, I, yeah, side note, I think it's ridiculous that in any way, shape, or form, we actually say that the prequels, oh, they were good, you know, they weren't. And I like episode one, but the prequels were not good. Man. They just weren't. Look, I'm, I'm treading water next to your island. I hear that, all right? Mm. <laughs> I'm just next to one and treading water. I'm not speaking I'm not of treading water. Kidding. That leads very nicely into my number 10 for treading water. Well, our number 10, but it was from my list. The second greatest shark movie ever made. Deep blue sea. <laughs> <laughs> Fred. So dumb. Fred. So dumb. Fred film. Fred best Fred. film. Oh, big shark. No, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> um, the shallows. The shallows was a good one. I'm not going to... Oh, I, I preferred this to The Shallows, but I love The Shallows. I thought this was better than The Shallows. What? I thought this was way better than The Shallow. Um, my light disagrees with me. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the Deep Blue Sea Man, it, it went so stupid, 
but it somehow made made it okay for anyone who spent any time with sharks like myself it's like sharks can now swim backwards just the biology of everything i was like oh kill me <laughs> fine okay dumb shark movie i'm along for the ride why are the sharks really smart in this movie oh well that's because we were doing an alzheimer's test on their brain but as a side effect the sharks got really smart i'm like Ooh, okay. Hello, 1999. So what am I going to get in return for a really dumb premise? Well, the sharks are going to chase LL Cool J around an underwater lair. Aha! <laughs> now I'm on board. And you're going to tell me the Punisher messes them up too? Okay, I'm in. Let's do this. It's so dumb, but so fun. It's, this is like... If you wanted to say, how would a 90s shark movie look? Like this. <laughs> this is how a 90s shark movie is. <laughs> Fact. Number eight, I believe, is yours, isn't it, AJ? No, it's mine well, yes. too. Number nine is yours. Number eight oh. is mine. Yeah, number nine is mine. I'm keeping it kind of animal-centric. I think this movie is a little underappreciated gem. Lake Placid. This movie has got... No business being this good. It's like, I think, I feel the way that the script writers sold this to the studios. was like, you know what's good is Jaws. How about if Jaws was a crocodile on a lake? Right? <laughs> it's like someone literally just ripped Jaws off and made it a crocodile instead of a shark. But then, weirdly, you put Bridget Fonda in there, Betty White, Don, um... Ah, oh, Mad Eye Moody, what's his name? Brendan Gleeson, Bill Pullman, hot off the back of Independence Day. Somehow, this really talented group of actors who never, quite, other than maybe Brendan, quite went mega, mega, mega star, hold this not bad script, but just okay script. And they it really good. elevate it. It wasn't a bad film. Oh, Oliver Platt's in it too. He's great fun. But they somehow elevate kind of meh material to being actually really fun so Bridget Fonda plays this I think she's an ichthyologist or a paleontologist gets sent out to Maine you know Mosquito City <laughs> and bloody uh Swampland because they've found big teeth and she's like what do I know about this what do you know it's a croc a really really big croc next thing team assembles stop the croc and movie it's great <laughs> I've heard you bring it up before. I can't remember where, but I've just—it's it's great. Like, I, yeah, I, it sounds like but it's, not, it's not great in an ironic way. I don't mean like it's so bad it's great. It's actually really good. Is it very similar to Ana Anaconda? That's way better. And again, it's similar vibe in the sense that it's animal eating people. In that sense, yeah, it's similar to Anaconda. But I've always thought Anaconda was a very, very like self-aware B movie that just happened to have some A movie actors in it. This isn't That's self-aware. This just is, is and it just oh. is pretty damn good. Oh wow. An interesting, an interesting topic. Uh, it's good. I, man. Remember, I remember the trailer. I remember the trailer. And I obviously when it comes to these animal type movies, it, it was always compared to Jaws and you're like another and that's always kind of put me off with lake placid i do remember the trailer but you're like okay so we've done sharks now it's crocodiles and alligators right okay <laughs> whatever that's how i've always felt about that one when it comes that's to literally it but it's good it's it's yeah if you deliver that's the main thing you know it's like it the does. shadows everyone could be like oh another shark movie if it's okay good, shut up here you go lake placid is as good as the shallows really okay no, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a it's shot. That level. I'm, I'm, I'm on side when I'm hearing compare it. it to. It's that yeah. type of level of movie. Okay. Well, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Right. In at number eight is a film about what many call the greatest film of all time. Not that you'll ever hear me call it that. <laughs> but yes, I'm talking about RKO281. And uh, I've brought this up a couple of times now. Come again? Never heard of this. Ringing the rain, <laughs> fill me in, bro. Fill me in. <laughs> you know what? I think it was on my cinephile movie as well. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but basically, um, it's Lee Schreiber playing Orson Welles, and it talks about how Orson Welles was 
trying to make it in the industry and how everything was there. And he had this idea and he's looking for funding and he gets this idea to build this film all about um, Citizen Kane. But it's actually based off of a real character. Now, this guy is one of the most powerful people you had in America at that time. As If anyone's seen Citizen Kane, they understand it. And it's all... You've seen it? Or you haven't seen it? No, no, no. I'll tell you, he's one of the most powerful person in America at the time. I'll tell you, talk about main character. Oh, <laughs> well, well played. <laughs> yeah, run with it, bro. I can't run with even it. Look at you right now after that. <laughs> <laughs> but it just talks about how the studios and everybody was looking to shut him down. What this nearly done didn't nearly destroy just Orson Welles, but nearly destroyed Hollywood because of the impact that it had. And it also shows the levels of artistic frames because there were certain parts that. If you really study film, you'll look at certain angle camera shots and what have you and understand it. You see what Orson Welles was going through, like where they're trying to get these, these shots looking up. But because of the way the studio was built, they couldn't do it. He dug a hole in the floor to get the shot that he was <laughs> looking for. Like There was a lot of effort into it. And obviously, again, some see it as the greatest film of all time. It's a film I've appreciated. I, 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 again, I think it's a victim of its own hype. Citizen Kane. I think for everything that people have been like, oh, World's Greatest Movie, and you don't, I, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't expect that. World's it is a one Greatest movie, movie if you're a real cinema snob. Then I get it. Right, do you get what I'm saying? And I feel like maybe on a second view, I might appreciate it more, but to me it was like, what's the hype? And there's nothing wrong with it being a drama. It doesn't have to be an all-guns blazing action movie. It doesn't have to be side-splitting comedy. You know, it doesn't have to make you want to cry to the, you know, till you've got no more tears left in your eyes. But I was just like, mm, okay. And that's how I felt very empty. And I think that's because of, as you said, maybe the snobber of everyone like, this is the greatest masterpiece. Looking at everything that went into it, I appreciate it a lot more. And that's why I've got a lot of love for this film. I think it was a one to see. Okay. I like that up here. I think people who quote Citizen Kane is the best movie ever. Um, I see, I'm with you. I see what they're getting at in terms of what it took to make it and in terms of the fact that it was the first film to ever use lighting in that way, the first film to ever use those types of camera angles, the first film to ever do that reverse narrative structure where the end, the beginning is the end. You know, There's all these things that it was first to the gate, therefore by proxy was hugely inspirational. So you can make an argument of, well, if it's that influential, surely it's the greatest. I get it. But you kind of like then the music douchebags from High Fidelity picking the most snobbish music that no one's ever heard of ever. Just... To be like, yes, this is actually track three is highly overrated on that album. It's track seven. It's like, okay. You know what it reminds me of? People that say to this day still, vinyl is the best medium for sound for music. Oh. It is not. It gives you a warm tone. It's a um, nostalgic feeling, but it's not the highest quality you can get. It is. It's not the best. But people will still say that to this yes. day. Oh. Yeah, it's very it's th yeah, so that a great comparison. Your number seven, Dan. My number seven should have been on everyone's list because this is the first um superhero team up movie. It's Mr. Man. <laughs> Yo. I remember Mr. this Man. company. I do oh remember my God, this really. I've 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 seen the trailer, I've not seen the film. I I'll, I'll give it I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll be real on that. I wanna oh say my. I want to say Tim Allen. Am I wrong, or is he in this film? All right, let's let's let's. I got I got everything. I got people here. Right. Mm. All right. So they have this is Ben Stiller. <clears throat> I don't have people here. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Izzard's in this. Tom um Tom well um I can't read for the life of me right now. This movie has stars. <laughs> right, Keenan script Keenan from Keenan and Kel was in this. All right, <laughs> not Keenan, Keenan Kel was in this. Kel's in it, the, the, the skinny one. Right, you got Greg Kinnear, this Greg Kinnear, Paul Rubens, William H. Macy, Hank Hazaria. Yeah, oh, I like Hank. Um, Paul, Paul Ruben, um, um, what's it called? Sorry, Kel, Keenan, by the way. Yeah, no, I changed it. Kel, you said Kel, all right, yeah, um. This movie, right? Okay, then. Since y'all like you lot haven't seen it, I can't believe you haven't. Superhero fans, superhero movie fans. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Wait, wait, AJ, you haven't seen this again? That's more I'm, him than me. <laughs> I am really shocked by this. 
So I'm shouting in my house. He's the guy who owns a copy of right. the Phantom. Just putting that one out there. That's more his park than mine. Let me break. Let me break it down for this. Right. This is 1999 when comic book <laughs> movies were comic book movies. Right. <laughs> right. Just before it became comic book movies. Right. You know, before it became a good thing. So. They made a movie, and it, the, the the area it looks like got you know the Gotham City type um Batman, so it mm. looks like that, but it's just everyone wants to be a hero, and they're not really no one's super powered. It's just people going out. There's a guy named the Shoveler, and his thing is he just got a shovel and he's hit people with a shovel. Right? Kick ass. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like think kick ass, but it's just over the top, stupid, stupid movie, and this is a group of um superheroes, but this is one guy, and he's a big hero like think superman but he has no powers but he's like the main superhero right but all over his super suit he's got sponsorship so he's got like shell hair <laughs> so it's all sponsored stuff he gets captured by the super villain and they go to save him and while they're trying to save him they end up killing him <laughs> so then they have to save the day yeah it's stupid there's one called the bowler there's a there's a superhero his superpowers is he goes invisible but only when no one's looking at him, including himself, he has to close his eyes. So does he go invisible? <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's does he, funny. We never see if he goes invisible or not. But <laughs> there's a scene funny. that come up and he had to have gone invisible. <laughs> that's like Jesus in South Park going, I'm allowed to change Walker's wine. Turn around. <laughs> Turn around, yeah. Turn around. So yeah, it's, it's a silly team up movie and it's so dumb but it's so good that you watch it and you're watching it with a face like what am i watching and as you're watching it you just haven't stopped and you don't stop you just watching time even go that was actually good <laughs> You've actually, you, you, metaphysical jokes like invisible but you're blind but you can't see the person being invisible that's funny i actually like that it's it's so oh, that stupid. pitch alone, I'm sold. Yeah, because it's that dumb. It's a, it's a silly movie, but it's the first team up with superior movies I've, I've experienced. But yeah, please go watch it if you haven't seen it. Take a view. People be still to this day. People are still waiting for part two, but they can't get all the characters because you know. But anyway, people still want part two to that, and I'm one of them. <laughs> right, number six. My number six is. Gosh, oh, yeah. Bowfinger. Oh my shit, yeah. Heavy rain. I'm still waiting for the movie to come out. <laughs> right. Oh. If Eddie Murphy, this is the time when Eddie Murphy wasn't Eddie Murphy, but still was able to make a gem like this while being part of this movie and just watching a movie being made by a, a studio that had a uh, broke, have no yeah. money, but have to do everything guerrilla style and just go out and it was it's so good it was not supposed to be this good as well one of what is it, it's those movies you can see a pattern here it shouldn't be good but it was good i watched this movie and i died laughing a bit eddie murphy's character playing his twin brother that's just his fan like eddie murphy's character is a big movie star and they want him in this movie um so if they get him in the movie the studio will sign off on it so they're shooting the movie with Eddie Murphy's character, but he doesn't know he's in the movie. So they're just literally going where he's going and shooting parts of the movie. So he's like, people are chasing me and someone's just running behind him. And it, it's guerrilla movie and then some. The part the, I always up. remember is that run across the motorway. No, no, no. And you're like, great shot. We did it great. We just need one more shot. Go again. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's... Uh... <laughs> I've now been to LA. No way in hell am I no, doing that. That long ass, them wide roads. Wide anyway, roads. both things are very tough for me because I always remember I was of the age to see. I believe it was American Pie, but I brought my sister and someone else along. I think it was another one of my friends, and they didn't have the rights to prove that they were old enough to see it, and then by proxy had to go to Bowfinger. So I was always oh. sour sour as hell and again it's just the highway scene so for me i'm like dead movie like especially because at the time they were like we didn't know it was his brother and they tried to play what have you and i couldn't get into it but the highway scene 
no matter what my vexation was, like cross <laughs> arms watching the sun, this one's crap. I don't want to know. When I saw the highway scene, I, I I must admit it went from that to oh my god, what am I watching? Like that was AJ cinematic. was going full shadow hell on that no, movie. I'm sorry, Heather <laughs> Heather Graham was is in this movie. Yes, she is. I you know, know she's I know. just oh. Now, if you want to see Heather Graham, just you know, go watch uh, little Mark Wahlberg porno film. Yeah, Very we good. know. Actually, it's it's actually not Mark Wahlberg porno film. It's a ripping good movie. Go watch That's it. It's a great it's film. A really, really, really good movie showing the porno industry over the decades from yeah. the happy go lucky time to the booming time to the part when it became choking, spitting all that madness. So go internet. watch it. It's really good. Really, really good movie. It's and Heather Graham and that Roller Girl. Roller oh. Girl, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I still remember. You haven't that. seen it, have you, AJ? Come oh. on. At the end, you get to see the most fakest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, number seven is mine. Ah! I brought up this movie a few times over the last seven years of this podcast. I bet Dan hasn't seen this one. And if you have, thank you. Hidden V hidden gem of the 90s because you've all talked about comedy today. You brought up Bowfinger. AJ and I have been joined at the hip ever since American Pie was released. <laughs> and like, this got lost in the shuffle. I, I didn't even know it came out at the cinema. It got I saw a trailer for it on Sky and the trailer was terrible. I was like, this looks like the worst American Pie knockoff and then you see it, and you're like, "This is great, dude!" Detroit Rock City. I know this. And... I know this. I know this. <laughs> I know this. Do you know it? Or have you seen it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I've seen it, but I've seen it once. I know oh. it. It's just, yeah, I know it. Is the I don't of, um... know why this movie resonated with me so much. I didn't know it was possible to, to to watch a DVD so much that the DVD becomes unreadable. I've owned two copies of this movie. The second one now still works. It's ah, oh, high school kids who are trying to bunk off school to go and catch a Kiss concert. Okay, <laughs> the big star of the movie is Edward Furlong. Um, Michelle from American Pie is in this. And you've got this, the, uh, the rest of them are kind of like, never really had a big career. Edward Furlong's the big draw in this. So the opening 20 minutes is them ducking out of school, yeah? The reason they're ducking is because one of them sneaks out of class, calls up the radio, who's giving away four, ki four tickets to see Kiss, right? Now, the reason they're trying to get the tickets is because the goody two-shoes little Christian boy, one of them, had the kiss tickets, mummy burnt them because mummy's a diehard hardcore Christian. And what does kiss spell backwards? Sick, they are Satan. She's really hard line on them, right? And he's meant to be a bad boy hardcore drummer. Huh. They've all got their own band, of course. So they call up this radio station, they win the kiss tickets, and they make their way to Detroit Rock City. They get there. Mm. Things go wrong. Because they go to this is all first 30 minutes. I'm not spoiling anything for you here, I promise. Oh, I've seen they go, they go into the radio station and he's like, Hey man, is your name Jam? He's like, Yeah, man, that's me. I called, I won the tickets. Plays him the tape back. So name all the members of KISS. <laughs> he names them. Oh my god, I won! I won! And then the radio host is like, uh, all right, all we need now are some details. <laughs> Hang on. Because the guy's so hyped, he thinks he can just show up and claim the tickets. So they've bunked school. They've driven all the way to Detroit. Think of they got kiss tickets. They haven't got a pot to piss in. They got no money. And the four of them go their separate ways to try and scalp, steal, claim, bully, beg, borrow a kiss ticket. It becomes a case of every man for himself. What happens? This genius. <laughs> it's so good. I'm talking beat-ups, strip malls, 
kids beating up little kids beating up big kids losing virginity in the church i mean this movie didn't pull a punch and i was like i love everything you stand for it's genius so you sold it well love this movie as well by the way it's so good hey you haven't seen this no 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 one ever. Okay, cool. This is on that. this on this is on this is on the list of movie for you to watch as well. We're gonna have a day of brain brain dead movies. Not saying it's brain dead, but you're gonna watch it and you're gonna laugh right. your head off. Cool. <clears throat> Sounds like a winner. Speaking of right. which, we've got so to we seem to be in like that comedy might fit well into. Carry on. Oh, okay. Said so we have a topic coming up in the yeah, next yeah, few yeah. weeks, which this would fit very well into. Um, so <laughs> we seem to be in the land of comedy. Um, we've done Bowfinger, we're now doing Detroit Rock City, and I'm bringing in my Eddie Murphy and my favourite backup dancer, Martin Lawrence, in 1999's great comedy, Life. Oh, wait, I get to use it, punt! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay, I mean, cool. I mean, is it punt or shut your mouth? Which one is it? I don't know. <laughs> Shut your mouth, don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, hey, I got to punt and I did it right. right. Nice, 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 I, wasn't, I wasn't panicking, that I was gonna mess it wrong. wrong. What we did it wrong now? So it's my no, five and four. Okay. I mean, my four and six. So, what? so what's your so, five? Yeah, it's uh, your my five, five and four. Piece. Yeah, yeah, all right. no, no, just number five, just number five, not five and four. Number five, then yeah, I punch right. Oh, I didn't mess up, <laughs> 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 right? So this one, I just put it on screen. Tell me if you've seen it or not. No. No, I've heard Office about space. it. I've heard great things about it, but I've never seen it. Right. Really good movie. I recently watched it again during the lockdown when it was a case of um, I live with someone that's quite a lot younger than I am, and then we have to go through stuff like, have you seen this movie? So we started to watch it. It's a dry humor movie where it's just you be watching it going, and there's parts which are silent, and they make a joke and just keep quiet and live in that awkwardness. Oh, it's so dead if you can't man. live in that part, yeah. So if you're in that area, you you watch it and go, "This movie's dead." Where you're working at, but give it a quick base of it. If you work in an office, you would understand this movie and you would relate to this movie. They're in this office and like you have to do the PTS reports, you know, like you just writing reports, to write reports, having meetings about meetings, that type of world. Oh, I'm and it's like dead. Movie. Yeah, so it's dead. He was it called again? The main character. He, he goes to this um place every time for a meal. He got Jennifer Anderson. Is Jennifer Anderson? Yeah, from Friends. Yeah, she's in it, and he he likes her, but she just doesn't work. And she has to wear. She's in another job, which is restaurant, and she has to wear this right amount of flares and be all perky, but she just wants to get paid and go home. So she has to wear ten flares. So she wear exactly ten. And stuff like that. This guy decides to go get hypnotized so he can bring his life because he's feeling like everything's going down on him. He gets hypnotized to be more happy and let stuff be free and just don't care about life. And while he's under, the hypnotist dies. And he's like, When I when I count to three, you would wake up and your mind would be free. And if he goes, one, two, has a heart attack. So then oh. the guy wakes up. And he's still kind of like under the spell. And he's more like now like, eh, what's life? Hey, it's cool. What's money? I don't need money. Oh, I'm not going to pay the bill. Why not? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so he became that type of guy. He goes back to work. And that's attitude. He walks into work wearing like a robe, serious slippers. Why are you wearing your suit? Nah, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to. Actually, I don't like these cubicles. Unscrew them, throw them down. Oh, it's a lot more open. While this is happening, his company is getting taken over. And while the company is getting taken over, because he's so, he doesn't care, he starts to get promoted. <laughs> it's like, we're going to give you more promotion. That. <laughs> yeah. And then he decided, you know what? Let's rob the place. <laughs> and him and other workers decide to go to rob the place. And then it just, it's just hilarious. And when you watch this movie, you're going to see so many other movies. If you watch Family Guy, you're going to see so many skits. There's so many pieces of this movie have been taken and been using other stuff. So, so basically, yeah. anyone who's ever worked in an office environment with people who, when they finish work, the only thing they can talk about is work. And they work. Don't... Oh, okay. This... I'm gonna... And you and you're looking around, and you're like, "Why am I in the same building as these people?" 
Oh, okay. it just makes you. I'm gonna love this. It's it's and it's but the thing is, it's so you have to just sit there and watch it, and they make the start like a day at work, so you feel like, oh, I don't want to watch this. And as, as when he, when his mind gets free and he opens, the movie opens as well, yeah, and yeah. become more free. You've so, sold yeah. me. I, lo- I love the premise. Love it. Uh, it's such a good movie. Anyway, that's my five. Cool. Look over to you. Yeah, five's another for me. Um, everyone talked about Hugh Grant in the nineties, and for good reason. <laughs> Bridget Jones. Sure. <laughs> I know. <what> you mean. <laughs> Divine intervention, right? <laughs> <laughs> The wife that he had, he went for the vine. Notting Hill. Freaking love, actually. Hugh Grant, along with Jim Carrey and a few other people, was very much, you know, made his name in the 90s. And yet, there's a movie I would like to bring to the table, which I think is one of his finest pieces of work. And I think is so overlooked. And I think is such a bowl of fun because. Just the same way at the end of that first Bridget Jones, and indeed the second Bridget Jones movie, when they fight, fight, Mm -hmm. and you're like, this isn't something you should do ever, and that's why it's great. A whole movie was based around that very concept of, let's get Hugh Grant doing something, I mean, I'm, you know, stuttering English gentleman Mm -hmm. Hugh Grant just shouldn't be able to do, and indeed can't, and it's great for it. I'm talking about Mickey Blue Eyes. Yes. Now, now this is great fun. So, Mickey Blue Eyes. Here's the premise. You go and play the, you know, moderately successful, moderately successful man. He's marrying the girl of his dreams, played by Gene Triplehorn. Oh, Gene Triplehorn. Um, and he has to go and meet the father. The father is played by James Kahn. Yes, Vito (laughs) Corleone's son from The Godfather. And in this movie, he's basically the Godfather. Hugh Grant is marrying into the mob. And he doesn't want to leave the girl. The girl doesn't really want anything to do with the mob. She's not part of that world, which is why she's never told him, told Hugh Grant about it. But they kind of take a liking to him. And then, against his will, he gets roped into the mob lifestyle and literally ends up in situations where he's having to talk New York gangster. (laughs) There's one scene in particular that will always stand out for me. James Kahn is taking him to meet another big mobster family. And he's saying, you can't talk like that. You can't talk like that, kid. You, You just can't do it. What do you mean? I just can't do it. Oh, like that. You get the hell out of here. Just say that. Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. That. Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. Me going to get out of here. Like he just can't get it down. It's an Englishman speaking Queen's English, doing gangster with no accent. It's laugh out loud funny. Please do me a favor, um, Nico. Same, do Mickey Blue Eyes saying his name? You know what I'm talking about. What's your name? <laughs> you know the part of the movie? Mickey. It's me, Mickey. Mickey Blue. <laughs> uh, the part where he gets shot. Why does my camera keep doing this? The part where, there you go. The part where he gets shot and he just has that kind of delay and he's like, <laughs> yeah, this is a really good movie as well. <laughs> and no one talks about it. You talk about the 90s you grant movies, no one talks about this. I've just decided this week I don't need to bring the best movies to the table because it's a revisit. I'm bringing the edutainment to the table. Let's talk about the movies that are not necessarily great, but are just good or very good and that people don't talk about. Detroit Rock City, Mickey Blue Eyes, Lake Placid. I got you. Mm hmm. Um, over to you, Dan, with your number four, please, sir. My, nu- my number four was the punt from earlier, and I'm going to use your poster because you've got the title. 
That's right. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> live. Oh my God. Imagine that happened to you. What would you do if that happened? Can you just imagine you go to somewhere? Yes, you're doing something illegal, but it's not actually forget that. Martin Lawrence's character was actually being a good, respectable good man. He yeah. was gonna get married yeah. and he gets framed and in a, in the south and yeah. just gets right. life. <laughs> and it's just yeah. two black men, life in prison, and it became the school thing. You're gonna eat that cornbread. cornbread. The cornbread <laughs> was do y'all remember those um little like flatjack cakes you got at school? That was the cornbread. <laughs> you're, you're gonna eat that cornbread, and that means your, your flatjack's gonna get jacked, or you better eat it all right now. <laughs> yeah, it was man, that like you can't make a tortilla like that. <laughs> 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 and what's his name? Bernie jiggly, Mac. Jiggly. Jiggly, jiggly. Yeah. <laughs> it just, this is just a, a star cast of, of of people just like killing it. And Eddie Murphy, once again, on the list in the year when Eddie's meant to be not doing great movies because he wasn't doing standalone. This is Eddie Murphy movie. It was everyone and Eddie Murphy's there as well. Yeah. But Lawrence wow, was great in this. Lawrence That's, was really this was, good in this. This was Martin Lawrence here between this and Blue Streak. He had a great year. This is Martin Lawrence's movie with yeah. Eddie Murphy. It's yeah. not the other way around. It was meant to be like that with Bad Boys. It was meant to be Martin Lawrence with Slappy, and then Slappy took over, and Martin Lawrence um, was the backup character for that. So it's mad. Yes. But yeah, you know, I, I what's it called again? I pointed this. AJ, you had this on your list. I mean, look, you've covered it. And I think Life is one of those films that I've like brought up quite a few times. It's the, the thing about Life, as you said, is that injustice of two men who, okay, you, you, you've done wrong, but it's not that level of wrong. And it's a, a life sentence and you're just trying to redeem, like get your name cleared and get back to your life. And what, it's, uh, it's bittersweet comedy in this because mm. laughing at it, but you would hate for it to happen. Each time it looks like you're on your way out, another mishap gets in the way and stops you from claiming that freedom. There was that time I think it was a judge who was going to like freedom and something happens wrong there. You know, the impregnation of the of the governor's daughter and it's like, <laughs> that kid's mixed race. <laughs> it's, like, it, it's got so much madness to it that you're just like, wow, like, is this the way? And then like, you know, I, I'm not going to get into spoiler territory, but again, you know, life isn't until you die unless it's a death sentence. And then you look at when they finally get out and you're like, all of this has happened in their life. In, in, like they, they came in as one life. thing, they're leaving as another. It was it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's funny at the same time. And it's that that chalk and cheese of the two characters that is, it works so well. I've always loved it. I will spoil yeah. one thing. I'll spoil one thing. And the Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> I really loved this film growing up. It was really, really good. No, I've always it. it's one of those films that kind of I wouldn't say it's unearthed, like it, it needs unearthing, but it's one of those that you forget how good it is until you watch it again. That's that's yeah. what, like cornbread is is like it, it's pop culture now, you know. That's just one of those things that in the community you're always gonna be you see a big guy, you're gonna eat your cornbread, you see someone <laughs> hesitating around their food, you drop that line. But the other jokes and everything else that comes out of it, you just it, it doesn't get the credit it actually deserves. Correct. And give you this, it's actually, it's not a comedy. It's just, co it's it's a co comedy stars in it. It's a drama. It's a drama. It's just, comedy. It's just yeah. got comedy actors in it. So you, you, just because you see Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac, and um, Martin Lawrence, you're going, it's going to be funny. But they just make fun of stuff. It's just people chilling and you're stuck. So you have to make, you have to make jokes on stuff that's so bad that you have to make, laugh about it. But damn, it's really, as you said, Life and all the stuff that happened between them. Yeah. What do you mean life? Life? No, 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 no. What do you What do you mean life? <laughs> life like life. And back then, they didn't mean they didn't mean 20, 26 years. That meant life. You're yeah. there. There is a cemetery outside the prison, and you get buried in the prison. So you're there after life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And this happened actually. This stuff like this really happened back in them times. I say back it's in the time. Sad, I, 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 it may still be happening now. That's the sad bit. Yeah. 
You know, anyway. from around here, are you, boy? Man, listen, when I went to North Central Florida and there was a sign advertising Fort White, and I was like, I swear I've heard that name before. Let me check. That's the KKK's base. Mm. And it's like a big tourist sign. It's like, please, racism in this direction. I'm like, why are you advertising that? Let me look around. Oh, you all got Confederate oh. flags on all of your houses. Oh, I'm in one of those. You ain't from around here, are right, you, boy? It's one People of them. forget that Florida's the South. People think oh, Florida, Miami, yay, let's no, go no, to no, Orlando. No. Yay. Leave the no. city Miami and then Orlando. Talk to me about Florida. Miami and Orlando can tell such a different story to what Florida actually is. <laughs> yeah. Leave the cities, then come talk to me about Florida, about Billy Bob Joe with his big old. You know things you see with alligators on swamp and um swamp boats? That's mm -hmm. Florida. A hundred percent. Bro, I, with the restaurant I went into on my first night in North Central Florida. Um, High Springs, in case y'all are wondering, it's I think the closest place is Gainesville. Um, the girl literally th this happened. I can't remember her name, bless her. Sweet young girl, until she dropped the line, uh, heard that I was English. She was Oh, I love your accent, and I also love my daddy. Now I'll be a waitress tonight. What can I get for you? I'm like, Why do you need to share with me that you love your daddy? That's just weird. <laughs> and I said to her, I'd, and I, I went English just to kind of mess with her. I was like, I'd like something quintessentially Floridian. And she went, well, I don't know what that means, but I surely can't get you something from the kitchen. I was like, is this real? Is this actually happening? Yep. But we back deep. This is true. Deep fried alligator. And oh, I was like, nice. what is that? She said, no, it's not. She said, that's deep gator. And she went, she went, it tastes just like chicken. Tried it. She oh, comes back a few fish. minutes and says, it's just like chicken, right? I'm like, yeah, sure. If you injected it with a butt ton of rubber, it's horrible. Yeah. See, this is where I want to take it to the British and make you try it properly again. It shouldn't be a thick piece. It needs to be thin. And it it's like fish. It's like frying a white cod deep fried. Anyway. Florida. I'm showing my country side, boys. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> All right, uh, all right. Next. Can, can we just also comment, like, look at the plethora of movies we've just gone through and how many of them are comedies? That was yes. the 90s. It's so yes. hard Com to get good comedies because nowadays. Back then, you could make comedies, like, as you said, life is a drama, but we make jokes about it. We got um, Office Space. We got we got movies there that you can... Detro um, Detroit um, Rock City. I forgot yep. the name of it. That movie, you can't make movies like that anymore. Oh, so, no, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, the, fear I know so. the fear of offense is so high nowadays that comedy just has no grounds to stand. And it's sad. And it's, it's not it's, just that. It's the fact that you can make movies that was meant to be offended and people know it's not, it's, it's, it is satire. Yeah. They're not trying to offend you. It's just making something that's meant to be offensive and extreme it. Bigger, well, we longer, get away and with characters like Fat Bastard and Mini Me now. Like, forget it. Oh, that's yeah. Dwarfist. Oh, that's that's body shaming. I'm like, yeah. that's shut the hell up and have a joke, man. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, it's mad. Um, but we're taking a little left turn now because no more comedy for me for now. I think, no, actually, no more comedy for me for now. This movie is unpleasant, but it's brilliant nonetheless. Angela's Ashes. This film is an absolute oh dude, it's a heartbreaker. If you haven't seen it, it it's it's a tough watch. Family Sorry, yeah, no. very different, very different to that. That yeah, that different. that's it, it, it's bad for different reasons. Okay. Um, I mean, look, lots of kids die in this film, put it that way. So it's one of those where you're like, oh god. Um so Angela is the mother of this very, very, very large Irish family. And, they're, you know, it's that time in Ireland where no one has money. Big old recession. Oh. Right. You know, they're having to literally when the coal truck leaves the coal factory in the morning, they're waiting for the coal to fall off the truck to pick it up. That level of poverty. Right. And all that's happening to this family and to all the families around them is they're having too many babies and the babies are dying. That's basically the movie, <laughs> and it's the and it's the kids who survive, trying to 
trying to process what that is is like why is the country in such a bad way why is my father uh, an alcoholic wastrel why does he have so much misplaced pride that he can't even pick up coal off the street when we can't put a fire in our house why are we being evicted why is my mother sleeping with my uncle why do they keep taking my baby brothers and sisters away in a box why 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 so eventually you grow up old and angry and bitter at the world but it's this growing up in this very harsh environment and seeing it from the prism that sorry not the prism the point of view of a child ah oh, oh. it's, a, it's, it's a, very, it's a very tough watch it's a very tough watch and like the main family that you follow you just like you, you know like we break. talk about life you could laugh at it even though it's a drama but you're like oh my god look they were they, you know it looked like it was getting positive here's another negative one Angela's Ashes is very similar to this. Like, the more you watch, the more you're like, oh, God, no, just give him a break. No, oh, no. It's just, like, it's, lit it's, it's just one misfortune after another. And it's sad because it's realistic. It's grounded. I think they say, I mean, this is a Danny Boyle movie, and it's... Is it Danny Boyle? It, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Don't it is. Money. I'm done. Is it not? I'm going to check that for you now. Carry on. And I'm sure, if it's not Danny Boyle, whoever it is, I'm sure they said it, it's, it's, it's part biographical. Like, there's parts of that director's life and something in it. I'm sure it was... Emily Watson, sorry, not Mortimer. My bad. Uh, That's the, what's it called again? During the potato famine in Ireland during that time? Yeah. yeah. Well, we know what the problem was. The country we're in. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. Uh, no, but it wasn't anyway. Danny Boyle. Alan, Alan Parker. Parker. Why did I think it was... There's one of them. Yeah, uh, maybe... Is it Parker's life? There was someone whose life it was... It's semi-autobiographical on, and I'm like, Jesus, above, like... Wow, it's it's something to, to take in. But, um, horrible. The worst part about it... You know the worst part about it? They probably toned it down. Sadly. 100%. Yeah. Turn it down. I mean, the Iron Claw was a rough watch, and they turned that down too. And that was yeah. I left that going. And they even they even took out characters. Yeah, <laughs> they took a um. Well, I saw it. A few, yeah. I saw that way. By the way, just saw that. I saw that way before. Once again, and uh, once a, once some, some once in a while, I get to watch movies before they come out. And mm. this one, I get to watch. I watch quite some time back, and yeah, yeah. it made me go yeah. research the actual story. I knew, you know, you know of it. But then I you watch the movie, and then you want to know, know more. All of it. But you watch the movie, I, and after you watch the movie, you're like, I want to know more. Yeah. And I went and learned yeah. more, and I was like, oh my God, it's even worse. <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing it tomorrow, actually. It's, it's, that's, my, that's my time now. I knew so, two yeah. thirds of the story. There was one or two things in there. I was like, oh God, I didn't know that part, really. Ooh. Ooh. The, f the, first, the first brother, didn't know much about that one. Well, I mean, look, because of... Here's the, the mad thing. The first brother's not even in the movie. I know. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Wow. Oh, because I watched the movie, then I went to research. So watch the movie, hard. Research and realize, I went, oh, and that's one of the, oh. Uh, anyway. There, there's Your a lot to bleed for Kevin Von Eric. That's all <laughs> I'll say. Yeah. Even though, yeah. It kind of pushed them a bit more, but anyway, and let me know after you watch the movie. Let me know. Yeah, you, you guys will hear from me tomorrow. Don't worry. I mean, right, it's cool. weird because I, I, being who I bit. am, I really wanted it to be. I know Kevin has got a lot of it and what have you. I was really focused, hoping for it to be like Kerry focused, but obviously, there, there, it's a lot incredibly more Kerry focused. Okay. Do you know what I really love? The love for the um the silver screen dude fans to experience a straight out of cinema reaction from the one AJ. Oh, they happen. I just don't do reviews, so um, that's I just, why. I, I, I want to hear that tomorrow. If I don't want to hear from you in person or on, on a message, I want to watch on YouTube and see my boy reacting to Iron Claw. Well, there's there's a bit of an unwritten silver screen rule that if it's come out, whoever <laughs> gets it first gets it first, kind of thing. Yep. So, okay, so yeah. you'll never do one. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to one. Uh, well, you, yeah, okay, I've you done can, one crumb. Yeah. You beat and me air. to Barbie too, didn't you? You did. Yeah, and air. I beat him to air, which was fake. Beat me to I, air. I hated I, him I was two, late. Two minutes later, when he beat AJ, me to, um, AJ, do you want to win on June? 
That's just not bad. I, I can make my way to Hackney. <laughs> uh, to be you fair, it's probably that. closer for you than it is for me at this point. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, anyway, we're going to uh, number three. Yes, which your number three. Almost my number one. It should have been there, but I couldn't because I haven't seen it for quite some time. Obviously, you know, it's... Yeah, it hasn't got the name, but I'm going to put that there. And Time for Mr. Ripley, that's a pun. Thought so. <laughs> Would have been okay. much lower for me, by the way. Yeah, it was an awkward one. Yeah, yeah. This is, it's it, it's a good one. The commonality and the balance of it, that's where it, it, it comes where it does. Um, okay. I mean, this was on your list. So I feel like giving it to you, but I'm happy to... I've spoken more than you have this episode, so feel free I appreciate to you saying that. I was aware, but I'm more than happy to appreciate what's on whose list. This was a film that actually, when you sent it, I was like, oh, you, you forgot to put it on. So I was very happy because I did see it on this list this time and it was going to be in there. Sarah Michelle Gellar, Reese Witherspoon, Selma Blair, Ryan Phillip here. <laughs> Cruel intentions. Yes, yes, do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, no, that, well, that moment. I think you're talking about it. And I'll tell you why. Man for Vegas and for, like, um, yes, um, forever stored into my memory for personal reasons that we won't get into because that's not what the film's about. Because take away. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely is. <laughs> Listen, take, In take God away. We trust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I bless yeah. thee, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we you take away those like mad moments, but that film is one awesome but twisted movie. You know, mm-hmm. these 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 spoiled brats in the form of Sarah Michelle Gellar and Ryan Philippe, even though their step it seems oddly weirdly should be like half that. No, they're step, isn't it? They're step, they're, but it's like yeah, what well, the relationship yeah. between them is like. It just looks wrong because you know there's still a link, even though it's not anything wrong. You're like, this is uncomfortable to watch, and it's this bet of how they flirt and try to get with each other, and how they just treat everybody around them in the most disgusting way. The world is an accessory, right? Literally, that I don't think there's a. You know, it's weird. It's like you you. You know, there were some things like there's a trailer out there now, like what would happen if Mrs. Doubtfire were a, were a horror? And it's the same thing and they play it in a different way. And it's the, you know, it's like, oh, that is pretty creepy what he's doing. This is like, if you were to play Clueless and say, let's make it dead pants it, like deadly serious and dramatize it. It's like all the things of like, oh, I'm going to use this and do that to my advantage. And where you can laugh in Clueless, this is like, oh my God, you sick little F. It, it's so disturbing, as you said using the world as an accessory. You just see certain bits and you, it's the innocent characters that they just use as absolute mm. prey. And you're like, the, oh. at first it's like, okay, let's see if they do it. And in the era where, again, let's go back to what we were talking about with last year, last week's topic of um, romantic comedy. And you got that, how to lose a guy in 10 days. She's all that and all that, where you see these miracle transformations. It's like, I want to see you do this with this person. You're like, oh, here we go again. And you think you're just going to take it as a light film. And it's like, you're so twisted. Why are you doing this? Like, leave this person alone. This is someone's life. Like, this isn't this isn't funny. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it it shows the other side of all these comedies that you can relate to, but on a serious tone, they do it. And then you know, it, it's weird how you you hate them, and obviously the end being the end. I don't want to get into it because I never feel a film. I, I I don't care how old a film is. It's always someone's always entitled to it to be their first time. You know? I actually thought the end I've was got a forced. No, no, no. I'm not saying anything. I thought oh. the end was a bit. No, I don't mean the 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 end the end. I mean oh. the 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 pre end. Oh, okay, um, yeah. The part in the street. I actually thought that was really forced. Um, I just thought, okay, it it could happen. Yes, it it wasn't like it was something that happened that was so beyond the realm of possibility. But I was like. Uh, I feel like you. I felt like they copped out a bit with seeing that character get a full circle comeuppance because it's like, oh, we're meant to root for him now. It's like, really? Um, he's still a dick. I don't care if he's try- had a. The Ugh. thing is, I don't want to say any. I don't know. Do you know what the problem with this movie is for me, though? Not another teen movie. Have you seen that? <laughs> See, yes. all of those, all of those 
Uh, like, I, thankfully, I've not seen it because I locked off, and I say this now, Spoof died the day they made Scary Movie. You need to shut up and go watch Not Another Teen Movie. That's right. You're the top Bro, you're the ugly one now. Zero trip. It's great. It's freaking great. Do you know why? Do you know I need to watch yeah, zero it? Trip. Hold yes, on, it's, it's not as good as Euro Trip, but it, it's that level. It's very good. You see, you see all the movies you just listed before the 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 taking a ponytail and acting. They take the Mickey out all that. So this movie has a what they did with this, which spoofs after I can't remember what it was in a stop. Spoof was meant to be here's a story, and we're gonna use all these little stories to tell it. So it stands alone as its own story, but it's taking a piss Correct. out of all these other movies. What they stopped doing was that, and they start just taking a piss out of the movies. They start taking a piss out of trailers, and it stopped being spoofs, and it stopped being um funny. Like Airplane is a movie, which is a spoof movie, but it has a story. So this, but this is one of the last ones to stop that. Since actually, Scary Movie One, they did that as well, and then after that, it just start to go. Scary Movie One and Two did that. Two, two did that. Yeah, yeah, with doom, doom. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that. The thing. So. This movie, problem with that is, why I say that is because there's like a little piece of the movie where they did the cruel intentions part, played the music and everything like that. And remember I just did that? They did that as well, but so it must have been egg whites. <laughs> because <laughs> god <goddamn. laughs> so, And it played on like the stereotypes like girls with glasses can't be hot. And then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Take, let, me, let me fix you. I was like, oh, not Janie Briggs. She got ponytail and paint on her overalls and glasses. Oh. So <laughs> I'll, give like, give you, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. You've seen um, um, six, 16 Candles, right? You seen Pretty in Pink. I couldn't get into 16 Candles if I'm Never honest. been, but you've seen it. You've seen Never Been Kissed. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Never Been ten, Kissed. Certain things I hate about you. Scene. Yeah, um, yeah, she's all that. Yeah, all those movies from you've seen them, you watch this movie, and they all make sense. <laughs> and there's a black guy in it, and he's only in the movie because he's a black guy. Turn on it, turn on it. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's on the list. You're watching that. You're watching that. And you know how you know you're watching that. Next time you come to my house, I'm putting it on, and you have to sit down, shut up, and eat your chicken and watch it. That's right. <laughs> so this is bringing race into it. <laughs> joking no, I'm not I'm bringing chicken into it <laughs> I, I gave my chicken to Trinity anyway moving on I, mean, you, I was waiting to see how that was going to be weaved in I was waiting for it because uh, uh, uh. that's all I know how to cook that's why come on man that's why you guys to be eating that anyway um, really good movie um, Green Intentions actually I like the movie a lot but as I said since I've seen the spoof it's kind of made the movie more of a joke because the spoof is much better than the actual movie <laughs> Fantastic soundtrack, this movie. Something people yes. don't talk about enough. It's got yes. an amazing soundtrack. So good that they play the music from the movie before you see the scene in the spoof and you mm. know where they're going. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just, you know the movie. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> jumping from that. You're in number that case, two then, then, I my think. My number two then, yeah. It doesn't have the title on screen because I just cut it, but you can see from the image, you know this movie and tell me you've seen it. Yeah, of course. So uh, this was on my list. Had we had an individual... In the movie, movie, it's an audio also. Yeah, I'm, I was going to. Oh, well, yes, it's your movie, Dan. It's, it's on your list. Yeah. So I watched this movie, and this is why I love animation. God, this thing break me again as well. Vin Diesel, I what know, of Vin Diesel's you. first role? Yeah. Bro, that robot flying <laughs> up. So, yes, I know it sounds stupid, no, but it's at the time. I wouldn't say stupid, but I'm I'm intrigued. I I've, I've, I love the Iron oh. Giant. I love the Iron Giant. It's, it's I, a case of think about think about the Green Mile. Why do you love that so much? It's this big dude that can destroy everything, but it's not that evil. It doesn't want to be with the Iron Giant. It's created for destruction, but doesn't want to be a a, a a killing machine and just wants to protect this little kid. And the kid just say, like, "I want to be like Superman and all that." It's like it's that big kid. And then everyone just come after him, the army, everyone comes after him and all that. And you know what you had to do to save everyone and all that stuff. So you just, you watch it and going, I feel so sorry for this. And the ending though did make me smile. It was a, it was a, I'm so thing. And then I got like, it's, 
it's a weird feeling in that movie. It's really hard to describe. It's one of the ones that, as I said earlier, when I watched Star Wars and it was the the hype and the feeling about it, and then watching the wood, being in the cinema with everyone and the feeling about this, this movie was the emotional thing it took me on. I sat there and if I'm if I'm what say it's four in the morning and I've got work at six and that's on the TV, I'm saying, ah oh, because I'm gonna be watching. Sorry, sorry, I say, oh damn it, <laughs> because I'll be sitting there and I'd have to watch the entire movie to the end, knowing I have to go, I should be going to bed, but I'd have to watch it. It's one of those ones that, no matter where I start in it, I've got to complete it. And I've seen this movie so many times and it's one of those movies, emotional for me. No, don't get me wrong, I love Very it. Very good um, movie. Overrated. I enjoy it, overrated? Yeah, why you say that? I think I so. Say that. I think so, and I really like it. I think... Oh. Remember, for no, me, no. That, I'm one of those people that says a movie can be amazing. It can be great, but still like... Yeah, but in saying that, why, why I say that, I don't hear a lot of people talk Iron Giant. Oh, jeez, people anymore. don't shut up about this. They, go, they, go, they went on about it for quite a while because yeah. the animation was so beautiful. The voice casting was great. The, the story was good and it was the time was set. So there was a point when this was the animated movie of animated yeah. movies. Yeah. But... For me, I didn't catch it when it was that. So it wasn't the hype of it. It was just sitting there and just knew nothing about it and watch it mm. and got emotionally invested. And to the point now, I don't even know what other people think or whatever people talk about. I just know it from my own emotional standpoint on the movie. And because I got that link, yeah, it would be some people will find it like, like now, if I, if some people if so, if someone who's never seen it before go and watch it for the first time, will definitely not have the same impact to them because mm. stuff like Toy Story three has been out, and if you know that's my one of my favorite movies of all time, and that hits hard. It's a that's not for the kids. That's for the the people that watch it from Toy Story one. So this movie is not one of them I would ever recommend to anyone to go watch because you won't have the same impact it did. For me, when I was young and I first watched it, mm. yeah. But it's um, really, it's make sure eyes. you tune in on the week of the twelfth of March. Then, then there's a topic we're doing, and I'm going to bring an animated to the party, which I don't think anyone's seen, and it genuinely is one of the best films ever. Um, yeah, mark, mark that in your calendar. It's going to be a similar vibe to this. Cool, will do. Iron Giant, one other thing. I always remember being at school and reading a book that I'm sure is the premise of what Iron Giant is. And I always try to remember the name of that book each time I bring this up. And it's very similar, but different ending. Um, I just, I'm, and I'm not even talking high school. This is way back, like eight, nine years old. So we're talking nearly 30 years. Oh, God, I just said that out loud. Wow, that was a shiver. She joined, but, she joined one, of, one of me. No, she joined me. <laughs> but like, it, 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 it's always something I've appreciated and it's always been great fun, emotional. It, it, it's one of those that you, you laugh when you need to laugh and you feel emotion when you need to feel emotion. And it's it's one of those that, again, you can always say, don't sleep on animation. That's what I love about it. Never Giant. don't. Hey, isn't that our topic next week? Yeah. I'm yes, it is. But it wouldn't qualify. Am I on the wrong video? Am I on the wrong video? God, man. Do you want to try it again <laughs> next week? Top. Well, actually, no. Well, I'm not splitting next week. I can tell you that for a given. Um, but yeah, top 10 animated movies of the 21st century is next week. Well, y'all know my number one already. I just said it earlier. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big movie. Big movie. Can't, can't fault you on that. Okay. So that was your number two, uh, Nick. You want me to do it? You want to do I'll it? Do, well, it was very high for me. It was my number one. Yeah. This, so I'll go two. You can take the number one spot. Yeah, that's good. I just looked. I just spoiled it. I looked and saw what it was, and yes, mm. cool. It nearly met. It nearly went into the went into the um, first edition of this movie's released in 1999 video. Um, but yeah, man, boys don't oh. cry. So it didn't right. make the list for me last time because I've kept it UK and it was over. I think it came out in 2000 over here. And by the time this, by the time I was like, okay, we're, we're taking the lead, the, the reins off. It doesn't have to be just this country. Um, it, it had to make the list. It was such a, such a film. 
such a film, but yeah, it's so that. sad. This film, do, do you know what? I, okay, this might be a True bit story as well. Cancelled. Well, well, there's that. I might be getting a little bit into cancel territory, but try not to get too angry and just listen to the point I'm making. One of the things that I think the average person doesn't like in the 21st century when it comes to LGBTQIA films is the fact that they feel they're being preached to. I don't think that's a rule of thumb that necessarily you can apply to all LGBTQIA films in the 21st century. Hell, there's some I've seen which are fantastic and I don't feel preached to at all. But wow, some of them I'm not... I, I'm sitting here. You don't need to be screaming at me about the message. I'm here sitting here supporting the message. Easy. This film is such a great example of being able to tell a compelling human story that is absolutely an LGBTQIA movie that doesn't need to emphasize the fact that it's an LGBTQIA movie, which makes it as a result, an even more powerful LGBTQIA movie because of its universality, because ultimately it's not telling you bad things happen in this because the person is trans. It's telling you bad things happen in this because the person is a human. This movie completely breaks down the barriers which these labels, I actually think, create. This just humanizes, or in some cases, dehumanizes everyone in this movie. You will feel for Hilary Swank in this movie. You will feel for <sighs> what she, he goes through. You will despise Bill Skarsgård in this movie. Despise him. Yeah, it it's, was a hard hitter. It was a hard oh. hitter. And I feel what hurt me more is the end of the film when you start to see the real life situation. You know, you start to hear the information and you're like, Oh, so this is real what I've just watched. Like I was yep. very like <clears throat> sorry, not Ooh. Bill Skarsgård. Um Peter S Peter Skarsgård. I was I was I was hurt by it. Wrong Skarsgård. Scars. <laughs> yeah. Horrible scars. It it, 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 it it it's hard. It hits hard. Can you tell what type of guy I was back in um nineteen ninety nine? A very emotional teenager. So yeah, <laughs> this movie had me like you know a lot of people came out and back then there was no lgbt um q i don't know the full acronyms um for yeah, back then sure. it was just gay <laughs> it was just gay and straight so that's how they looked at it, it was like it was a gay person playing um stuff like that so that's how it was looked at in that time that way in the movie so even back then if you were um homophobic you still fell because it's like you show monsters and what it's showing is monsters are just monsters. Bad guys are bad people. It's just, it doesn't, they, they are just the worst set of brothers in the world. And yes, once again, I'm going to admit it again. This movie had me sitting there with that streak going, mm. why? And then I was even to that point going, it's like going, why didn't they just, why didn't they just leave? Why didn't they just leave? Why are you, why did you stay? I know. And I'm like, say, why didn't you? Why did you stay? But why do you have to? And then I always switch it because for me to understand um others what they went through, being a black man, I just put it in the case of like, imagine I'm a black guy that went to the south, but for some reason they don't think I'm black. I'm mixed and I'm just got a tan, and after realize the tan's not going away. <laughs> it's it's just I just try to bring it in the case of try to think of it as. What if what would it be like with me? And what, why would I stay? Maybe I, would, I fell in love. And as you look was saying before on your previous show, love makes you do some dumb things. <clears throat> and Fact. you know it's not safe. Fact. I should get out of here. But you you fall in and you're like, I, I can stay just one more day and then I'll, I'll go because it's not safe for me. And even at the end, I know I knew what it was before. And when I was watching the end and I was like, I, I can't watch this. It was a tough a tough watch mm -hmm. it was a tough watch for a movie and boy man i need to get back on some comedies man i, I can't do the the deep part because you just bring me right back can you tell movies are an emotion for me i find i get emotional attached to movies and that's where i take it from if you don't if you can't catch my emotion, 
That's the power yeah. of them. That's why I think they're the most important form of art in the world. They're so subjective. They're so experiential. Finally. They're, they speak so, so much to the human my psyche. Finally, it's like, my finally is we, all this show, we haven't disagreed, and this is the first time we will be. Music is the most powerful art form in my eyes. <laughs> A lot so, of yeah, people we finally agree. disagreed on something. A lot of people like, agree with it. you on that. I just want I think most I want people to agree with you on that, in fact. But it doesn't matter. It's each day. They goal. are they're two sides of a coin to me. They're mm. two sides of a coin to me. I feel I can play music to get me in or out of a zone. But at my lowest, it's weird. I think at my lowest, I watch certain films, which it's weird. I know that I'm feeling some way and I can, I think I will pitch, not that I see myself as a star. I wouldn't even say as a lowest actually, but like I feel a certain way and I have to watch a film that matches that mood, which is really weird. And I'm like, okay, I'm down in the dumps and I'm going to watch that kind of film. There are other times I'll do it the other way that like, I need it, but I, I can't really think of a time I would like watch a comedy to be like, I feel like crap. Let me slap that film on. I, I don't have that go-to movie. I, mm. I know I have my angry song. I know there's a time if I'm really PO'd, that song helps me vent. Um, it's just weird. I don't have a you both cheer up. you both edit you both edit film. Do you know what yeah. makes a film a film? The music. Yeah, the music. Oh. But you know what? It doesn't matter because if you are a film fan, you're a film fan, and art is art. Some yeah, people, it's not music. It's not mu um um videos. It's yeah. not movies. It's actual painting. So they can go to a museum and just look at artwork and that's what take them out of it. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. each day their own. Music can completely I'm I'm change the dynamic of a scene. You know, you were mentioning that horror rendition of Mrs. Doubtfire before. I bet you yeah. all it takes to make that movie creepy is put the Exorcist music on it, watch that thing take on a new uh, release of life. <laughs> yeah. I will send it to you guys in the WhatsApp later. I think I might have done it before, but I'll do it again. I've already it's done it. I did it. It's literally just the music. Yeah. Of course it is. The music so can... Start with the script, and then the music brings it together. If you don't have a good script, the music can't save anything. If the film's bad, mm -hmm. it's just bad. Like it all starts with the written word. But the moment that's in place, and we're actually rolling and editing, like the music will give it its sense of life. The Every great scene, like my favorite city scene in cinema history, when the uh, Rohi Rima charging the Pelennor fields in Lord of the Rings. Music. If they don't have that violin, that. <laughs> loses its power completely and jumping from that going there is a there is a movie with a great composer that couldn't even save it Indiana Jones Crystal Skull you get all that music that you want to hear but what was that movie so if you got a bad script you can't even it's music the written it. word this is it <laughs> visual noise uh, my favorite thing right but because let's just jump to my number one because is it oh wait would you know uh, a bad I don't, I don't have a worst. If you have one, by all means, do. Oh, let me just flick to the list quickly and see what's there. Because there is a bad... Last week's bad, by the way, by you, great. Because Which one that was, was it? a stupid... It was Wild Wild West. What a dumb piece of... I picked that, didn't I? Um, no, it was... Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it was you because... I got it here, there's a, there's a... I did. Right. Um, it's really hard to find a bad... <laughs> it really is. So let's you not push for it. Let's not push for it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Don't have it. Good. We don't have a bad. I've got. Oh, guess what my number eleven was? Boys don't cry. <laughs> it was my just in case something was wrong. I just saw something on it that was on my list. Mm. Anyway, let's not do a bad. Let's make it all good. Let's make it actually funny. Let's bring the best Star Trek movie ever. That's actually not a Star Trek movie. That's right. I said, Galaxy Quest. Oh, well done. Tell me you've not seen Galaxy Quest. Well done. Well done, of course. It's... No, hang on. Oh, wait. I'm wait, mixing wait. this up with Lost in Space. No, Galaxy, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest is actually one of those spoofs that worked, if I remember. It's not right. a spoof. It's, his own <laughs> That's it, movie. it's not a spoof. I'm right. <laughs> Straight dead eyed me. Don't let that fool you. It's his own movie, all right? Did I see Tim Allen there on the right? Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. I do like did. Tim Allen. I do like so, Tim Allen. Imagine, I'm going to go the way of Spoof, since Spoof makes Spoof want to Spoof. Right? I'm picking on you this time, AJ. Last time was um, Nico. This time is you. I've got to <laughs> have a battle with someone. Right. 
So imagine the Star Wars Next Generation cast yeah. was sitting there. Imagine they were sitting there and they're going through the, the roles and they're doing their thing like, you know, yeah, let's go to the conventions. But then some people, some kids from the convention come along and like, please come and help us. You can save our, um, our galaxy. We're in war. Turns out they've been watching Star Trek and thinking it was real all along. <laughs> it was a documentary. So these people that were acting in this thing called Galaxy Quest for years and now it's been cancelled and they're just on the, the show, the touring scene and these real life aliens came, build a spaceship after them, model the entire society of them is at war and bring them up there. And you have, you know, let me see, I've got the actor and fans actually believe even um, Star Wars um, creators and stuff like that say this is the, not Star Wars, Star Trek says this is one of the best Star Trek movies. That's not a Star Trek movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tim Allen's in it. Sigourney Weaver is in it. And the only thing to make sure she was in it was I have to have perky uh -huh, and I have to, I want to be blonde. So they gave her a blonde wig and gave her a fake. <laughs> and was that, that also was okay. Alan Rickman on that poster? Yes. Alan Rickman plays an alien. Think of her, the um, clan on. He's the alien on it. And yes, that's right. You've got all these people. You've got Sam Rockwell is in this. He's the red shirt. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know he has to do a dance at one point. <laughs> so you had us. Who else is there? I didn't even watch everyone that was there. Yet um, you need to watch this. It's <laughs> such a good movie. Like you know, um, I'm not a Trekkie, right? Get Trekkie. You will like it for the premise of a movie, right? Okay. It's just as I said to you, you got these people that are on the convention scene. Then they have to actually do all the stuff they did on the show. But these aliens believe they are real heroes and the stuff they're watching with documentaries. But the bad guy is really just... It's, I know it sounds stupid. Um, No, it's not that. I'm but it's so good. Of, I don't know if you've seen it then. The Three Amigos? That's Similar good. to that? No. Yeah, have you no, seen no, it or no. you haven't seen it? Yes, I have, but no. Okay. The three amigos of the SNL script that became a movie that's not a good movie. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, <I said>, yeah. <laughs> right. This one, it, out of, think of this. Let's look at my list. It's random as hell. It's movies that just touch me and feel me in a certain way. This movie is one, as I said, I can watch anytime. It makes me laugh. It makes it just it's just such an awesome watch. And just think of the overbearing actors. Think you're a super mega star and you think you're the greatest thing ever and no one cares about you anymore, but you still think you're a star. That's um, Alan, um that's Tim Allen's character. He just, the douchebag that's drunk and like, yeah, I'm just, I can get any role I want. I can do whatever I want. And then the rest of the people are just his co-stars. And then he has to become and learn to work as a team. And Sigourney Weaver, this is when Sigourney Weaver was the hottest biggest star out there and she decided I want to do this little bit part role my god I love it <laughs> please 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 watch it I'll check it out I know, it I, out. know I recommend some stupid things that you like to watch and you watch it and go I don't know why Dennis watches different things but please watch this <laughs> <laughs> hey forget about it <laughs> okay Mickey Blue eh? <laughs> okay thank you Mickey Blue. All right, AJ, take the number one then, bro. Right, in at number one then is the oh, the second film that we punted on. Like, it's weird that there was only is it two films we punted on. Yeah, yeah, I made so a point. Our number one that. was there. We are Lieutenant Mister Ripley. Oh. Um, <laughs> these are one of the films that you know. <sighs> You can't ever underestimate the power of Matt Damon. I feel that if there's an actor who does what he has to do, but it's not often, how can I say? I don't want to say he's not respected because he, his name does come up, but people don't give him the credit he does in terms of like who's your favorite actor who could deliver a performance. I feel Damon's always just kind of forgotten by people. And this is one of those films that he just shows his power. Um, this, 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 this young individual who's 
trying to make it into into an upper echelon. He's just was trying to make more in life, and he he falls into the world with with um, Jude Law and Gwyneth Paltrow, and has manipulated his way in there by playing to be somebody else and faking it in a way that you're like, this is <laughs> like you know this can catch up with you, but he worms his way out in every kind of way possible and just survives and is just living living a dream for someone who's not been that fortunate, you know, for, for whatever reason. And you, you're now experiencing the other side of life and it's it's a high and it's like, you, you root for him in the sense that, yeah, like live the dream while you can, son. But in the other side, it starts to get dangerous. It starts to get messed up. And the more you feel like you're being uncovered, the the, the, the lengths you go to to protect this persona of being that person. And it, it catches up. It starts to catch up. And this is the story. It's of a man who, yeah, could have got away with it. And yeah, you know, it, it, it starts to unfold. And you're like, this is bad. And by the time you get to the end, it's it's got so many emotions to it because you're you're you kind of split in which way the, the world like it, it just shows like just be you <laughs> because the more you fake it and the consequences that come with it it's not nice it is not nice and um weirdly enough going through all of these films that we had and looking back I was kind of torn and it was it, it, it became really high for me um I it, it had we been able to go back, I think fight, yeah, Fight Club was my number one. But this was a film that I didn't see it in '99. I was very late. I've seen this in the past two to three years. Same here. But it's like wow, yeah, this film, Same this film, is good. This film. I thought it back it, then. It left an impression. Check out Saltburn, AJ. I do you know what? <laughs> when I posted this poster, when I posted this poster, I knew that that was the the follow-up and I'm like, I, I need to really just press the Amazon Prime button and get on with it, which I haven't done as yet. But, just do um, it. Yeah. You'll be violated, but it's a great film. The thing is, what I hate about Saltburn is that's all I ever hear. What the flip have I just watched? Like, <laughs> the film's crazy. I'm yeah, like, but it's, oh, I just, it's, it's, a good, it's a good experience. I get it. I, I, I'm ready no, for it. Not- Forget all that silly noise. Like, it's such a minutia way of looking at a movie. It's like there are two or three scenes. It doesn't matter who you are or how hard a stomach you have that are going to make you go, oh, God. Doesn't matter who you are. There are two or three scenes in this movie, in Saltburn, that are disgusting. Take them out. Let's move the conversation along and not just say, oh, those scenes were disgusting. Yes, yes, thank you. Water is wet. Now let's talk about the movie. It's incredible incredible it has got so much to say about class about elitism about being parasitic like in the talented mr ripley Mm -hmm. saltburn is literally like if parasite and the talented mr ribley ribley ripley Mm -hmm. made a baby and then that baby got raped by a clockwork orange ready for this talented mr ripley i never saw uh matt damon's character as a good guy from the start even when he was oh, joining the elite, know. and you know that like, everyone was kind of rooting for him because um he was still worming his way in, but it was kind of kindish, kind of innocent. They didn't turn him into who he was. He was always like that. He's a so crazy sociopath. It's, it's it, he. You, how can I say? If it wasn't for Catch Me If You Can, I don't know if I would have seen him that way. But you know that that kind of chameleon type person who has a way of worming in you like how far can you go with this that's Catch the me, kind of he was charming he oh. was the other one was charming this one was wormy and you know you just have a <laughs> feeling like there's something something off about you like if you get that person that come along to the show is that you are there with your friends but just want to join in and bring other people to join in and want to be with the friends. And you're like, there's something off about you. It's that type of person. (laughs) You've literally just described salt (laughs) burn. But yeah, um, let me just cut this this one quickly now. You know, we're talking about 1999 films. Like, I want to list just a couple of films that we didn't put on any of our lists that could have made it on on the lists, right? Because like, this year we had, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but it's Bond because GoldenEye was the year before. Um, the world is not enough. Yes. Wow. Nearly made my list. Great Bond film. Um, the Bond Collector. Not right, seen which it. is a really good. 
right? Yeah. Big Daddy, which I know it seems like yeah. it's called again, think, but it's a really good movie. It um, let's go with Arnie trying to play a badass in these times, you know, end, end of, of days. days. You yep. know what I'm saying? Um, I'm never going to talk about any, any Given Sunday because if you're an American football fan, it was a great movie for you, but if you're not, it's just another movie with Al Pacino shouting at um, everyone and Willie Weeman. You've got Entrapment going on. You've got Double Jeopardy. Another movie, Run Runaway Bride, bringing back Pretty Woman cast together, right, you know? <laughs> Run nice, yeah, Runaway Bride again. You've got the Boondock Saints. If you're around that age and watch that movie at that time, oh my God, that was fun. But you know, some you got movie, um, a movie called Go. A friend of mine lent that to me. I watched it. I love it, but it's not making my list. Um, being John Malkovich, that was a talk of the year, by the way. Was Everyone's on about making sure something, but being John Malkovich was it? The Blair Witch Project. What was great marketing for a movie? Yeah. You know what I'm saying you got what's it called again? Let's go with... Oh, oh, I've got more. I'm ready to go if you want to do more. Oh, you got more. <laughs> I'm just going from something like, you know, oh, yeah. I don't want to go every, every single movie. I'm just going for the ones I highlights because, you know, you talk about the best man. It was on my list as well. You read In Too Deep, which is another movie that was just a more black bait um, hood movie. But I liked it. Um, you're going, what's it called again? Let's go with um, The Return of the Joker, Batman, Beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going animated. Return of the Joker. That scene... Where he smashed the cup and did his thing, and the Joker was back, it lives on. And I want to see that in live action somewhere, right? <laughs> you got to see how horrible the British are when they went against France with against the story of Joan of Arc. I know, I know, but a lot of people didn't know about that until that they saw cool. that. It's all right. You know the story. You don't have to watch it. You just story. if you didn't know the story, oh, watch it. I know the story. <laughs> uh, man, go with what's it called? Deuce Bigelow, that male gigolo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so um, before I keep running off with my stuff, um, Nico, um, you had some you want to throw in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the mummy, I was going to bring that in. Oh, yes. Um, I forgot about that. Asterix and Obelix contre César. If you're a French person, you know Asterix and Obelix is. Tarzan, the animated movie. The 13th Warrior, which I actually thought was a load of fun. The Antonio Banderas movie where he gets recruited into the Viking clans. I thought that was really cool. House on Haunted Hill. Don't care. Love it. Jonathan Price horror movie. Great. The Hurricane with Denzel Washington playing a boxer. That was also 1999. Um, and yeah, you kind of said everything else. There's another yeah. one that I stick in my head and I can't remember. I'm sure I recall enjoying the film but it's such a blank to me i didn't dare bring it up and i think it had bad reviews and i'm like i need to watch it again but i only like spotted it this morning when i was like have i forgotten anything the general's daughter with travolta and i do recall i think i enjoyed that film but i i, I it's an army base well naturally with the name in it it's an, a, about a murder of this general's daughter naturally and they're, they're trying to uncover what exactly happened and i do recall quite enjoying that film I don't, I don't it might be panned but at the time watching it, i was like not bad if you like not it bad. you like it bro yeah so i'm going reason i brought that up was the fact that reason why 1999 is my favorite year for movies last you lot did this did this before this is a, a oh, sorry i've got one more banger Go absolute ahead. banger that didn't make our list sleepy hollow yeah and that's not every movie. That's just movies we like, don't they? There's other movies yeah. on there that some other people might love. And last time you did this, together, you had 18 movies or 17 movies mm -hmm. on one stinker. But you had 17 movies together. We just made a list and only two punts. I just rounded off a bunch of movies. This is one year. There's only 12 months in a year. I know every week you think a movie come out every week. If that happens now... That doesn't happen these year, these times. You don't get so much bangers and bangers of movies. Last year was close. Last year was quite good. Last year was but, really good. I'd also I'd also say 2017 you, was incredible. But you don't get that often. You don't get good movie, good movie, good movie. You just get, there's a good movie coming out soon and you're waiting for it. And then it comes out and in between you might find a gem here and there. But then this is years later and you still can recommend to some of these movies to people. Some don't hold up. But others really do. Can I say it? It's my favorite term: the middle ground movies. 
because as much as they're middle ground, it's like you don't have to be a blockbuster, you don't have to be art house, but you can be flipping fantastic and people appreciate Double it. A's. Which is now gone, which is a industry in the movie world, which is now gone. Bullet Train happened last year. If you supported it, that's fine. It was fun. Uh, this year, Argyle, double A movie. Go support it. Really good. Right. These so, are the movies you have to support. Well, we've got two movies that have taken up the rush more already with Ripley and Life, because those be the puns. I miss it doing this again. There we go. Then I'm um, going to give you the chance to be the guy to, to, to talk. I, 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 yeah, you can. Well, we've got now. Um, I'm going to put in the um, Boys Don't Cry. I know it wasn't on my list. It's on your y'all's list, but it would have definitely been on my list. But I just wanted to be happy. <laughs> I'm and, not going to fight that. Uh, all right then. So I should get one from my list. It's really hard because my list is a, is a a personal thing. So there's a lot of movies on there that I will look at, and other people might look at and go. <clears throat> think so it's about this hard also to put in it on. terms of this is going on the Rushmore on Twitter. So just. Give it a chance. Twitter family. Basically. So, Twitter family. Life is not going to do good on Twitter. But life then. Yes, I, I will. I will forever. Yeah, no, but I will forever call it Twitter because he does not own the rights. It belongs to Facebook. So Twitter, um, is going on that one with the symbol of an X. Ripley, cruel, and let me put one of my. Let's put a, let's put an overrated movie that everyone keeps the hype in a lot. That you know it won't. It, it will get destroyed. If something's going to get destroyed, let it be funny destroyed. Let's destroy Star Wars Episode 1. Don't be silly. Star Wars <laughs> is going to win. It'll win. Like Episode 1. Really? Star Wars Matrix will win. The, the, word, the, first, the first two words are the, are the key point. Anything else that comes after it doesn't matter. All right, then. So let's put it in Episode 1. <laughs> 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 Technically, I mean, technically the it's the best competition I can find on here, short of cruel intentions. I was Which gonna one? say cool intentions, yeah. I would go, yeah, cool let's intentions. do that. Let's go, that. Okay. let's go with that. I'm, I'm gonna just go dismiss my list because I've got two from my list anyway, so I'm good. All right, I'm like, if I'm gonna, you, you can announce the film that then. It's all, it's, it's, okay, I'll do, I, do, do, do a drum roll. Ladies and gentlemen, the official movie Mount Rushmore of 1999 movie releases revisited in no particular order is. That's what I said. I was leaving it to you. I was giving you this, the fl the platform. And that's what we call live TV. That's what we call live TV, people. Let's do this one more time. Are we going to do it again? No. Nope. Okay, cool. Any Life. Movie. Then movie. <laughs> we got. We oh, have. Second entry is. Cruel Intentions. Our third entry is. Boys Don't Cry. Our final entry into the movie Mount Rushmore of 1999 movies revisited. Is the talented Mr. Ripley? It's good list, quite a good list. It's an actually really interesting. It doesn't list. touch like, the first one, but it's a good list. No, but listen, it, it's no, interesting. Those are some interesting dramas that's out there, and like one of those weird comedy, a, a dramedy. Like, it's a very interesting list. I'm not opposed to it. They are films that people have always talked about. Does it touch the first one? Maybe not, but not one of those films are not brought up in conversation. You know, if you talk 99, if you don't bring up the year and you're like, oh, that film, someone's going to tell you about Boys Don't Cry. Someone's going to tell you about Mr. Ripley. Someone's going to tell you about Cruel Intentions and they're going to talk life. So I'm I'm kind of confident with that. Now, as confident as I am on that, it's on you guys, the screeners, to head on over to X. So it's just my thing then. I know it's only one drop. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Pick up the exhibit when we do that, and you head on over to at movie MT Rushmore uh, at movie polls for you, and your crown your winner once again. That's the one you only get one vote because it's a retweet. Life, talented Mr. Ripley, boys don't cry, and cruel intentions. And next week, we will announce our winner. So, guys, until the next time, I am the one AJ Anthony Jordan. 
Um, Nico Lero, shout out to all of my Nico Holics. Been a while since I said that. Thank you all so much for having me on. I'm Dendro Tech. Got no catchphrase for this one. <laughs> <laughs> the film buff who watches films, who works in film. <laughs> okay, there we are. Okay, guys, it's blessed, and you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, comment below. What are your 99 films? What did we miss out from you guys? And more importantly, tell your friends to tell your friends because we can't do this without you. It's always appreciated. We out. See ya.